Yeah. Yeah. I right. just want to give a reminder that all the Township Council meetings will be audio and video tapes so that they can be shown on the Township Ocean's Community Cable Channel, Channel 22 on Verizon BIOS, and Channel 77 on Cablevision. Roll call. Mayor Napolitani. Here. Councilmember Chair. Here. Fisher. Here. Terry. Here. Okay, the notice requirements for the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the coaster posted in Town Hall and filed in the Office of the Municipal Clerk on December 8, 2022. Items for discussion, let's start with our engineer, Greg Blash. Okay, good evening. Hurry up, quick go, Greg, before he gets the computer out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, first thing, Joe Play Park. I think that's on the agenda tonight to get authorization to go out to bid for that. We're getting ready to go for that. Speed bumps, uh, I believe those have been ordered. I tried to find out from Marcus Sakis that I, uh, I'll follow up on that tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure they've been ordered. I just want to find out when they're due in. Uh, next thing, no change. Um, whale pond, there's really no change. We're doing a small crossing, a larger crossing. We're waiting for the budget. 5G system, I don't know where that's at. We're kind of, that's in limbo, so I guess until they come back to us, we'll. Let it sit between Verizon and Unisite. So the balls in. So based on that, the balls in their court. Yeah, I think we kind of uh, reviewed it. I, I know with uh, Verizon, we told them that I probably should send them a letter to make it formal that we wanted a area map from them. Unisite gave us one. Very good. So yeah. I'll, I'll send them a letter to just make okay. sure it's formal. We told them verbally. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing, 1001 Wicker Peco. That project is out to bid. Bids are due April 6th. Uh, I'll leave the next one for last. Uh, pond dredging, that's ongoing. We're setting up a meeting with preliminary meetings with the state to talk to them about the, uh, the reuses of the soil. 1515 Logan, I believe, is on Monday night for a planning board meeting. It is. Cool. Uh, Bibler traffic study, there's no change. And the two storm water control ordinances, there's no change. We're looking at the various changes and modifications. And probably next month sometime we'll make a recommendation. We'll sit down with the council and kind of go over the pluses and minuses and so we can decide kind of which way you guys want to push those changes. And that's for where? That last one? The stormwater ordinances. Oh, oh ordinances. I'm yeah. sorry. I heard you wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the last one I want to talk to you about, I moved it the last one, the South End and Bulkhead. Um, something going on there? Well. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah, something new you would Let's think, right? Let's lighten it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was actually pretty funny, Rob. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, I mean, I've brought a bunch of pictures with me. I don't know if you want to go through the dog and pony show, but what the pictures show is, I think, luckily, it's amazing, the timing of this was, I guess, somebody was looking out for me. The aerial photos that were taken by Google and the, the, the drive streets were actually during construction in 2013. So it shows the disturbance that we made. It shows all the disturbance in the woods and there was hardly any. It, but it also shows all the trees that were there along the, from the whole length of the street. And I have pictures that I took this week that show before our construction area, obviously, you know, we cut the trees down where we're putting the, the bulkhead and the, the sheep pile wall. In. And I took pictures afterwards. They're all the same, except for our area is very clear. So somebody cleared the area out, whether it was nature or people, but I think somebody cut all the saplings down and it helped erode the bank and the bank has slipped. You mean going back how long ago, you think, roughly? Oh, I took the pictures compared to 10 years. <laughs> 10 years? To now. Okay. Because th that's when the, the, the Google Earth had the pictures in the computer. I, I did go by there yesterday mm -hmm. to take I a look at it. it um, I was actually surprised it wasn't as long of a length. Like, I really expected to see yeah, the whole <laughs> length of the road, I'm like, you know, I pulled on, I'm like, all right, so I saw yeah. the section. I think yeah. the issue now is using steel beams versus some other natural shoreline. Yeah, so Greg, can you explain journey. that, like, so that we, you like know, have an understanding as to yeah. what Don is, is Don is stating compared to what you as the engineer is stating? Well, Don is stating he doesn't want to do anything. He wants me to leave everything up the, from the curb to the water the same and just reconstruct the road. I, I don't think you can do that. And I'm, I'm a layman. It's it's yeah. Yeah. Right. You can see it's But are there other alternatives to like a steel frame where you can have like, you know, you know, some kind of bank where the, you know, turtles can run up and down and turtles. make it, yeah. Not really. The point. problem is we have, the, turtles there. if you look at the, the geometry, it's kind of like a parabolic shape. The, the slip, we call it the slip line of where the mm -hmm. slope failed. So you have a bank that comes up and then you have a <coughs> street. That slip line goes to the middle of the street. So that wedge is what's moving of the street. So to put something over here, we have to stop the wedge from sliding. 
Mm -hmm. So to put something in, you have to have it uh, something that will either support it because mm -hmm. it's heavier in weight, or it goes deeper and it can support the moment to overturn it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the sheet pile wall is the cheapest, most effective way to do that. And at least in intrusive, because anything mm -hmm. else you're talking to build a retaining wall, you'd have to build a concrete retaining wall to have a footing that can walk 10 mm -hmm. feet in front of it to stop the overturning wall. And that would be in the water? That would be in the water. And you can imagine the cost of construction for that, because you'd have to dewater it. And then you're losing the aesthetic that he's yeah. trying to protect. And it would be <laughs> uglier than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But what, and I'm going to meet Don out there tomorrow. I told him I meet with him. And in talking to him, he was kind of saying, you know, we're not putting it in, and, you know, maybe we could just try it. And I said, well, what if you're wrong? I said, I mean, I got to go to the end game. What if you're wrong? I can't come back in and two years and collapses. do the whole over again. Mm -hmm. I said, it, it, it just wouldn't make sense because the neighbors were tough enough to get the easement for the poles now. Because he was saying, why don't you just leave the pole on the other side of the street? And that's not happening. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, I'm going to meet with him tomorrow morning. And I think there's some ways that we can come to a common ground because he is, and he's right, you can't plant a very large tree when the sheep pile is 30 feet deep. Mm -hmm. It has to be 30 feet deep structurally to take the overturning moment of the road. So if you can picture this, I mean, something this long, and you got all this weight from trucks riding on up here, what's kicking, it has to move all the weight under the road for it to fail. <coughs> That's why it has to be 30 feet deep. Mm -hmm. Anything shorter, it would, you know, have more propensity to be able to turn over. So what kind of plantings would be feasible there? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to plant big trees. What I'm going to do, we're going to sawtooth the sheet pile. Oh. So we'll just take certain sections, and we'll go out take, I'm taking Bill Brooks out with me, and we'll, we'll pick how what the increment of trees that you would put <coughs> these larger trees would be at. It may be 30 feet, it may be 50 feet. Now our whole wall is only 85 feet long, so it's not really, you know, big area that we're talking about. We're probably get three trees in there, maybe four. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave the sheep pile up instead of 30 feet, maybe we'll only go 15 feet in that section so the tree roots can get under in between the wall there to mm -hmm. support it. Because the wall, the, the tree roots definitely are underneath the road. Mm -hmm. And when we cut them, all those trees would have fallen in the water. That's why they were, you know, pretty much holding up the water, the, the street, and when they fall, fail, they go, you know, the whole road fails. But I will meet with him, and I think he'll be somewhat happier with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to point out to him down the road, and I want to kind of put him on the spot a little bit, is I think the DLA Commission should be doing an annual search or a walk, a visit mm -hmm. around the lake, mm -hmm. because there's an area about 500 feet just to the east of this where we're, it's, a, it's a longer area, and it's worse than this. Mm -hmm. The road hasn't failed yet, mm -hmm. but the bank is almost totally denuded. There's a guy that has a boat down there, so that's probably what, where that, how that'll happen. But it's just before the hard turn down there. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the next area. And we can do the same thing here and try to get a couple of trees planted now. Mm -hmm. That may help. But I think he should do that around the mm -hmm. whole lake because it's just, it's mostly, in my opinion, people doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like cutting down all those trees. Mm -hmm. Over the past 10 years, if you lived there, who did it? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, if you look at these pictures, and I don't know if you want to, I'll, I'll pass them out if you'd like. But the picture you can see from, you know, 2013 of the same area, the picture we have before we cut, started cutting the trees down, or this was actually the day they started. I mean, you can kind of see, you know, there's this week, there's what it looked like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was before construction. Mm -hmm. So you can see, I mean, even though it's green foliage, you can count, you can see the, the trunks in there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way there's only four trees in there. And we only cut six trees down in a hundred foot length. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Any concern for like visual, if you're on the lake and looking at it, what would it look like? Is From the like, other side? No, if you're like on the lake, like canoeing, and you look to the bank. Uh, well, what's going to happen is the profile there, it's kind of, a, a, it, it dips in the middle. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to probably see about three feet of wall at the most. As and you it's going to be like a silver conch, like what is it? Grayish. 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 Okay, kind of. But, you know, it's, it, but as you go away from the middle of that, it, the ground comes back up. So most of, most of this wall is going to be underneath dirt. Mm -hmm. it's so be it won't, it'll be a, like... You won't see it. The top of it's going to stick out a foot with a pile cap on top of it, just for safety, because this thing, it's like corrugated. Right. It's just, yep. you know, for strength. And then we put a flat cap on it so nobody doesn't fall and cut themselves on it. Mm -hmm. So that's all you're going to see from the curb side is this foot. From the other side, in one area you might see three possibly three and a half feet mm -hmm. at the low spot, but most of it will be covered. Okay. And if we put the trees in there, you won't even see any of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the trees are going to take, you know, three, four years to truly establish, but I think that would probably be, I think that's all I talked to him today, and that's really what he's mainly concerned with, is replanting mm -hmm. trees. There. So we, maybe we can get a place for the shade tree to come in, and yes, you're talking about. Exactly. Here's your tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to add that to the list that I just got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think, you know, that, that should solve the problem. He, he's, his story has come along ever since he's gotten more and more facts. Mm -hmm. You know, because when he first started, he thought we cut down, you know, 32 <coughs> trees, he was told. 
and then when he got back, he saw it was six. It, that kind of changed quite a bit. Who is this? Don. Don. Because Don. Well, yeah, he was out of town when somebody called him, and that, that story just got you know, magnified. Get ready for your meetings, Mark, because I got my calls, too. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> you think people cut these trees down because they want to see the water and all that stuff? I mean, when we were out there, when we were out there, the, the people across the street came and asked the crew if they could cut a couple more down. Oh. <laughs> just keep it rolling. Oh, just yeah. take the rest of them down. Okay. Yeah. But you can see as you do that, I mean, the, the trees are going to naturally they fall anyway. It's just nature. And when they die, they take off. They have a view of the lake they should sell. Right. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is, is if we wouldn't have taken the tops off these trees and the roots are underneath the road, when we put the sheep pile and cut the roots, the whole tree would have just fallen in, which isn't the worst. But the problem is it would have taken the whole bank with it because all the roots would have went with it. This way, they're not going to fall into the water. We're just going to cut them, and they're going to stay right where they're at. So this bank will be made stable until we get other trees take hold. Gotcha. Okay. That was all I had. That was enough. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Rob. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <right now. laughs> so uh, I do have one quick question. Uh, 37 subparts. Are you saying only one Only <laughs> one quick one, question? Or 32 is subparts. Uh, just did, uh, so the striping, that's, in the proposed budget, the, yes, for the, for the police yeah. items, yes, right, yeah, it's like forty-one thousand, or it's, we put it in the front line item, yes. Okay, and uh, we have the money already appropriated for the forty that we wanted to do for the bike lanes, right? But I kind of wanted to wait for the budget to merge it, and whether it's more conducive to wait a little longer anyway. And what that was my next question: the bike lanes on Monmouth, or the bike lanes in general? That's we'll probably do that in, in May. Got but it. yeah, that was the original forty that we had gotten. We go down Coralie's Monmouth up to Park to. Right. What, down to Interlaken, and then uh, I think a portion of Wicopeco. It was okay. like an H. Uh, got that, got that. Did you have a chance to look at the sidewalks on um, Poplar? Crosswalks, sorry. Yeah, the, the crosswalks are nowhere near Willow. Okay. They're so we're over good. 500 feet away. Okay. And actually, I mean, it's not, being at the top of a hill wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either, but I don't know what that was all about. But they're at both ends. One's at Kenneth and one's at Cotswold. And I'm, talk, I'm talking to talking to JCPNL about getting higher intensity lights there. It's, it's a little dark, so if we get up a little brighter light, it should make it much safer. Cool. That was it. Okay. Okay. Margie, anything? Um, worked on uh, some shade tree stuff this week. Wait, for, I'm sorry. No, no, for oh. Greg. Oh, I was oh sorry. Say. I'm, yeah. so, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. Right. <laughs> I got the whole other no, list. I'm good. For I'm good. <laughs> you were there at that meeting, so yeah, I don't need to update you on what went on. Dave, anything for Greg? Sorry. So on Deal Road, right across from the high school, the uh, Hello High School, I thought I saw one of those five G canisters. Is that true? Yep. So what's that for? Just for the school? Yep. Or yeah. See, they came in and they, they one of their application was, and <coughs> that's really the only reason it got approved was because they weren't going to put anything on the ground, and it was specifically to handle the load of the school, the expansion of the school. But that's that's kind of why we did these ordinances. We don't want these boxes, but you know, it really is it, the the ground. Mommy is where the problem is going to come in, you know, because then it's another thing. But this apparently was Verizon's own pole, and they put they want to put their own 5G on that pole. So you can see what the problem is, is with this 5G stuff. Yeah. Verizon is going to come and put it all on their own poles or get rights to do certain JCP and L poles. Other people can't use those poles, other companies. So we're going to get another pole after that anyway. So we will end up with the multiple pole problem. That's why I think we we have to do something with this 5G. All 5G poles should be built so they can accommodate three people, three carriers. Right. Uh, yeah. Verizon's going to fight us because they it's much cheaper for them to use their own poles. Yeah. In other meetings I've had with them in other towns, they've said, well, if somebody else wants to use you know, in the same area, we'll build a pole then. But it's like, why would you build a pole for somebody when you don't need it? <coughs> so they're, they're, they're like a 500-pound gorilla in the room, and they're not going to budge. So that's why it's going to become more of a legal issue than anything else. But All right. Just I thought I saw it. I was like, yeah. yeah. I don't know if we let us go yet. Yeah. yeah, that's the only one that okay. will get approved because of the school, really. All right. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Thanks, yes. Greg. Feel better. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Yep. Okay. Good. So, having a free capital conversation because uh, this is just one piece of capital, but. Because it's uh, with the PD and Motorola, it's all the radio systems, which we already explained to you, and I think the chief mentioned it when he was here a couple weeks ago. Um, we have an expiration on this offer for Motorola, which uh, holds the interest rate, locks it in 
it expires if we don't take it before April 30th. I think our next meeting is not until April 27th, so that's cutting too close. CFO has found all the money, and it goes as follows. The entire balance uh, to pay will be $1.5 million, exactly $1,573,407.85. And we were given three options. We were given a five-year, seven-year, ten-year, after uh, myself, the chief, one of the lieutenants, and the CFO met. We like option two, which is seven years. Um, it's annual 4.19% uh, interest, and that, to be honest, that's why we took it. The, the one year was 4.4, um, excuse me, option one was 4.4, option three was 4.25. So we took the lowest interest rate, and that will be a, a lease payment of $263,000. $975.76. Per? Per year? Uh, yes. So Over seven years. Yep, for seven years, which will get to the 1.5. So I just want to make sure everybody's okay with that before we give the go-ahead on that one. So I, so when I saw it on the, on the agenda, I talked to Jesse. Jesse said talk to Lieutenant Gregory. Yep. Which I picked up the phone He's, and called him because, PLC, again, I do this during the day, kind, yep. of, my, kind of my thing. So I didn't, he, he mentioned this, but what was on the agenda was just the 200000 for the radio. Yes, because that's, that's the approval. Cool. I wanted to mention it here so we get out there, everybody's clear if there's any other questions or whatever. Well, that's why, not on the agenda. And why we're doing it. It's 230, 263 per year for seven. No, 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 no but that's on the agenda. The 200000 is on the agenda. That's on the agenda. That's what they were. Wait, let's see what resolution on Hold oh, please. On 87. 200,847. Yeah. So Greg mentioned, uh, Todd mentioned that. The lieutenant mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I notice how formal the Board of Ed is. You know, they're all like Miss Donlin, Mr. Fish, Dr. Fisher. <laughs> uh, Dr. <laughs> Donlin, sorry. Dr. Fisher. I don't mind not being called Dr. And just not in the context. Where Fair enough. Dr. That was is called duly Donald. noted. <laughs> Having said that, Todd said, that, what are you Todd said that that wasn't uh, ready yet. The finance. The mill, right, the whole deal wasn't. Yeah, that's why we're getting your approval now, and CFO got to line all this up. we got to sign agreements with Motorola, and then he has to do certification of funds, which we have. It. Everything's all set. Right, he said that make, was, right. Because really this should be done part of the capital, but since we've got this deadline for the interest rate, we want, I wanted to do it now. So that's that whole discussion. And I think there's 200 I haven't gotten there yet. It's probably something different. It's the last, it's it's the last one on the, the nine uh, one. David says Page I can, five. Yeah, I can go get the agreement. Oh, uh, no, I'm good. I just need to get my eyes on it. Yeah, that's probably the funds that he has already. Yeah, he said it was approved last year. Yep, exactly. Right. We had that conversation too. So we'll have a different conversation about items like this appearing on the agenda five minutes before the meeting, but that's a different conversation. Exactly. Now, the reason for that is I know it right. backs into this April 30th, the next meeting not to the 27th. So trust me, the chief ran into my office. Next thing I know, Ricky was coming in, the lieutenant was coming in. He was waiting when I. And and I got, yep. Yesterday. That's right. And then I got tagged uh, bringing the bad news. <laughs> okay. but, but this will improve our radio system tremendously and catch us up to 2023 with everybody else. So. Yeah. He did mention it. Eaton Town. Yes. Now I'm trying to remember who else. Eaton Town, <coughs> Neptune, and somebody else had the poles up there already. So we're not even going to have to pay for yeah. it. It sounds like we're going to be able to reuse theirs. Yes, yeah, so and we, we, had some, we had some of our own up too as well. So, but these will actually give the physical radios. Right. Okay. Um, Thank you. Next thing I had was a uh, kept well related. Mr. Huxley came to Mike Trico today. I had him forwarded up to me. He would like to donate his piano. We have an appraisal from Russ Sills Piano in Red Bank. Uh, the piano's $5,000. He wants to donate it. It's a baby grand piano so that it basically stays. Mike Patrico has, uh, from a recreation standpoint, said it makes a nice touch in the room. So 
so his recommendation and I'll co-sign his recommendation saying that he would like to take take accept the donation but just want to make sure the council is okay with that and then counselor I don't know if we need to put a resolution together to accept it and formally do all that with the, with yeah. the blessing of yeah. council sounds yeah. good just factor in annual piano tuning yeah we'll have to put the maintenance in okay You're right but right now what we're doing just is accepting <laughs> Any members of council play the piano? <laughs> My wife does. <laughs> I must have probably, had, I must have had a lesson. My wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah. Probably doesn't want to move it. It's probably like how heavy it is. The library. Pianos are tough <laughs> to move. They're tough to move. I saw Laurel and Hardy trying to move it. Same thing. They seem really Jack may be the only one who knows that film. We'll accept it, but we're not giving you anything. We're not telling you it's not valued or whatever. So that's a that's a go green. Sure. Yes. Why not? Okay. Sure. All right. We'll put that on for the next meeting. Matt and I will figure it out. If we don't know, Marty knows. Then finally, two piano lessons for Marty. We want to uh, rehash and revisit the township flag policy. Oh. I will yeah. turn this over to Matt. You want to do it for us? Oh. It's an attorney client thing, so we're doing it in the cold, so we're not doing it right now. Okay. But I like it though. Okay. Came up with a good one. Nice. Okay. And I think that's it. I have one more for clothes, which is personnel. I have one question. Oh we talked about um, a trail committee for the lollipop area. Yeah. That's what in the work. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I don't have to try that now. I think okay. the, the issue, uh, David asked me about that. I think, and I asked Marty, I am pretty sure that that would be under the Deal Lake Commission's jurisdiction. Like, I don't, that it's part Not of, here. Mm -hmm. it's part of their watershed, okay. so the cleanup would be them. So okay. for Ocean to, we don't have any call it jurisdiction. We don't have jurisdiction for the trails? It's, it's like land. If you if you look to see where what they're they're responsible for, it's not just you know to the water. They also have up and cleanups and stuff like that. So, it, so maybe you know. we can do it in conjunction with them. Maybe they appoint some members. We appoint some members or something. Like that. Well, yeah. they just the or they just commission just has some sort of subcommittee or sub something. Yeah, they got to set they the subcommittee up. They have their own cleanup. I mean, maybe not the lolly. No, no, he want, oh, they no, want no, no. to trim. It's not about cleanup. Yeah, they it's want like to trim that trail back out. Yeah, like and Greg was concerned about yeah. that. Yeah. They're basically re reinitiating the trail. Mm -hmm. And Greg wants to be on site or at least show them how to properly. So that they don't succeed. create the issue yeah, so that we have an edge mirror. <laughs> right, there you go. I, we need to, then, then we need to find out exactly, I, again, I, where the DLA Commission's authority ends. Maybe, maybe we should have a meeting. Yeah, I think we should have yeah. a meeting Let's, with the deal like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'd uh, like to be there too. Uh, okay. And we'll get um, Don Brock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Greg, Don Brockle, you, you, yeah. not me. <laughs> and, and, not and three turtles. Jesse. <laughs> turtles. <laughs> Jesse, I know. You You're very important. Uh, yeah. And get her a tree too, please. <laughs> I, I need to see more. She needs to have one like planet. A planet. I'm shooting so for ten. I mean, hey, okay, listen. I just want it's yeah. gonna start. You know in Matawan, if you go over like the Green Lake thing, they actually have turtle crossing. Watch out. They roll over like Ware Town turtle crossings. We mean Ocean Township. Oh, Jeff, I know what I wanted to ask you. The real birdhouses. <laughs> oh, birdhouses. Hey. I wanted to find out ah, if you oh, can okay. buy them. Um, the people with the birdhouses oh, yeah. that yeah. Came, that approached you, do you have like a card or something? If, do they sell them for <laughs> private people? Oh, you want one of the uh, yes. No, I can forward you the email. Okay. Because all their contact, the person's contact information is within the email. Okay. Matt, anything else legal out of closed session? Or Marty? No, I have closed sessions. Okay. Nope. Uh, let's go around the horn. Councilman Achera. So let's talk about how we put things on agendas again and when they get put. So the agenda was put up Tuesday afternoon? Yeah, I did it like 4.30. Right. So I know we've been through this. I don't know if we've done it with you as manager, but we've been in, through it previously when Chris was mayor that we tried to present things on Friday. They get discussed on Monday. They would appear on the agenda on Tuesday. I didn't count, but I think there were five new items. Eight. Eight new items since the but the agenda came out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. 
it's not personally it's not fair to us to have the opportunity to review it Absolutely. and it's not fair to the residents not to be able to see it until if they're looking today to mm -hmm. see it mm -hmm. so can we just kind of crack down on mm -hmm. somebody's so, going to get mad but you know what uh, it's not our problem if they're not prepared now if there are exceptions i get it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well it's like this it's right, right. Yeah. so but, i just wanted to ask jesse real quick was what were some of the items that was coming on one, one was the liquor license transfer one was the developer's agreement there was some and budget. Then obviously they had to go on to this meeting yeah okay yeah. Well, and i can can i ask why I, I, it's just the They've been waiting long enough. We finally got the clearance, and we we put them on. So if just let's pick on the liquor license. If it didn't happen this week, they have to wait. They have to wait a month. Yeah. To okay. And yeah, I still think we don't have another meeting yeah. in two weeks. But what happens? Like they can't Nothing. sell any they liquor. Can't, well, it's, it's, can't it's a pocket mm -hmm. license, but it's it, a pocket. It's a pocket. Could, that's why I said. Oh, that's why waited. I meant that. It could have waited, okay. but it wasn't. That wasn't one of the tough ones. To and the do. developers? The developers that could have, probably could have waited. Okay. I, yeah. Again. Yeah. Mm. yeah. If we make an exception to one, ones, right. we're going to end up. Right. I, I'm just, mm. it's Agreed. tough to. I agree 100%. Yeah. yeah, so if we can just streamline it, end it yeah. by Friday, have the discussion on Monday, we'll sit down and, uh, I mean, you, Rob, you meet once a week on Wednesdays, right? So, yeah. I mean, Sometimes we on. review it. I see it by yeah. Tuesday right. night. Yeah. Wednesday so just we have to we have to put our communication to yes. all the department heads and yeah. no I'll more. co-sign it and tell yeah. them that they can't put anything yeah. in no more last minute yeah. stuff. They yeah. need to get the it Friday in. and a Friday at noon yeah. or whatever yep. deadline that you said. We had it unless it's an emergency, yeah. something like this, you know. Yeah. 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 Only yeah. in emergency Contract cases. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. 100%. Only in emergency cases. I, I yeah. agree. Yeah. And you know, if we can have the the agenda emailed to us as well. On that Monday or Tuesday, that would be great. So Dave and I didn't meet this week for any number of reasons. So just a quick couple <laughs> for Dave. Okay. Ocean Glades, anything change? No, we're still there. We're doing a site uh, visit with the professionals to take a look at it. I mean, basically, we want to button it up, um, <coughs> leave it only to the LSRP to do site remediation, whatever that means from DEP. So we got to get that answer, and then we would probably recommend to the council that we'd like to probably just sell it as is. If that's not the choice, then the other option is just maintain it as a public works type of yard area. Got it. So okay. Those are the options right now. Got it. And then now, we're looking- Dave, what okay. potentially could be there, if, let's say we kept it and we just, <coughs> you know, did what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We could do that, use that. Yeah, I mean, you could have housing there, but it's, you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's risky with the remediation. Yeah, thing. I don't think we want to do the that. The money you got to throw at the remediation. But you could do but, those. But, but, like, public works. Yeah, yeah, or somebody could do a warehouse there, right. too. So, like, you could cap it. The warehouse, the right. foundation could be the cap. They stay in the area outside of the wetlands, and you could put a warehouse there. People are not living there. They're not there overnight. They're in and out. How many acres is that roughly up there that... Minus the I think it was wetlands. eleven total, and like seven of it was off limits, and maybe four was buildable. Okay, and how much of that's wetlands? Do we know? Out of the seven acres, a lot of it was wetlands, and then that bird landed there. Right. So we had to have the offer for right. that bird landed. <laughs> yep. So, so that kind of kept that seven acres have, off. Off. Yeah, because then you have all these wells there that are doing all the testing that we have to report back to DMP. Yeah. Okay. So we have about four right now. That could potentially that could be, be yes, about three or four. Okay. Dear. Dear. Yes, sweetheart. Conversation. So. <laughs> Conversation next week. So we are meeting with a subject matter expert on how to do the non-lethal way. That meeting is being set up, I believe I saw it for either next Wednesday or Thursday. Are you part I of that? I think it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I think okay. it's Tuesday. Are you a part of that meeting? I'd, I'd be happy to be part of it. Okay, I'll, I'll um, tell Tracy when it is. Okay. But um, I asked Tracy. Um, I know Tracy and I were meeting with the gentleman, and um, and then he has to put some sort of proposal together, and then we have to see what the cost is because then based on the purchasing threshold, I may have to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Okay, here's a question. But again, can we go? go to, we can't really go out to bid until we have the approval. Is that what's the the uh, order of the process like? Well, once once he looks at what he thinks it's going to cost, mm -hmm. if he comes out 
Anything over 6,600, I have to get other quotes. Mm -hmm. So you get quotes as part of the proposal yeah. you're sending to the state? No, no, no. This is in-house now. This is this is a whole bidding process with the local public contract law. Okay. Yeah, but why would, but to March's mm -hmm. point, go ahead. Do you have to get it page. now versus when it's approved? or like? No, we have to get it now because we need somebody to do this work so we can give it to the state. Okay. Oh. That's, where, that's where you're missing the boat. That's why I said this is a lengthy process. Yeah, I got it. Because this is only okay. one of many things that we have to do. Okay. Um, so so once he says, say anything over 6,600, I have to have quotes. If it's over 17,500, it has to come here for council approval. Right. If it's over 44,000, we got to go out to do it. So I don't even know how much this costs right now. So that whole, this conversation is a preliminary conversation with a possible vendor who could do this work for us. And I don't know how many people are out there either. That's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. But wasn't the prior proposal something, and I don't know if, where I heard this, 1300 per deer? So this is an alternate that process was, of non-lethal? This was a different, that was a different study that was just kind of guesstimating everything. Okay. And now we're getting somebody who's actually going to do the work, what the scope is, we got to determine all of that. Like, you know, where, where, where is he going to end up at and all that good stuff. So, and, and again, supposedly this, this gentleman does it all over the place, including, I think, other states, too. Mm -hmm. So, just to be clear, that is a requirement of the proposal to DEP to get the approval for a non-lethal program. Correct, because one of the things they're requiring us to do is how we're going to do it. You have to put the plan together, and that's what this gentleman does. He puts the plan together on how you got to do it. It's going to cost us to pay for the plan, and then once the plan is in and we get it approved, maybe by the state, then we got to implement the plan. Right. So implementing, I get that's. Yeah. But, but this plan could be rejected by the state. Absolutely. So we're on we're on the hook for whatever this costs us, and we could lose. We could get rejected well, flat out. We don't know how much it costs, so we're possible. not on the hook for the plan development until we. Are there any off. benchmarks in other no, towns? Councilman, yes. The state not even approved. You know, once we pay to do the plan, if it gets rejected, we've already oh, spent well, that money. Yes. We're yeah. out the money. But we can decide whether or not to do the proposal. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on. Oh how yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But my question to you is: how, Is there any guidance from the county at this point? Is there anybody? Can you pair up with other towns and have a have a co-op to go at this thing? It seems so crazy that we are the only town. If you look at all the other surrounding populations, what is everybody else doing? They're not on They're not doing, doing anything, and then the county's having a different thing. Sorry, I'm doing the hunt. So, so why? Is, it just seems so crazy that, you know, I mean, listen, I understand we have a problem. Well, I accept that. We have a big park. In that we have a big park. Big I get it. But we there's have big parks in other parks. places, too. Yeah. Well said. It just well, seems like. Golf courses. I just can't believe there's no guidance from anybody at a higher level. Right. We got three. With some deepest pockets. Unfortunately, the higher level advice is the hunt. And that's not what we want to do here. Hmm. And that's not what the residents yeah. really want yeah. to do. I mean, that's kind of... And when I say we, I'm not talking about just this table. Yeah. I'm talking the, the town. We really honestly can't do anything until this, this is all done anyway. Yeah. And, and like you said, it might get turned down by the state. We might be out of our hands. Yeah. I mean, Princeton and, is working on the similar thing, too. So Correct. That we're not the only... And Staten Island's, Island's doing, doing the same it. thing, but they've spent roughly $7 million over a five-year period I think they're about a million a year seven million they're up to to maintain yeah, but that is the population. Population. Keep maintaining it. for all of Staten Island we're not the, I mean, yeah. no we're not Staten sure. Island but I mean seven million they spent seven million we have to look at how many deer they have I mean yeah they're a lot bigger they're a lot bigger than us their budget's yeah. a lot right. bigger right yeah. Yeah. but do they have as much green as we do Coast Not any time, I huh? Islands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I was gonna say I, there, it's there a conflict general to there. me. Yeah, no, they've got just areas in Staten Island. Okay. Uh, two other ones that I believe are Jesse's um, virtual mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have to work on that. I'm okay. trying to do proclamations. Okay. And All good. <laughs> um, and what was the second one you were looking at? Sorry. And signatures. Virtual meetings. Virtual, virtual meetings, meetings and another one? what was the other? Yeah, there was no, the other one. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, uh, was building naming? How other towns mm -hmm. named buildings? No, that no, was there that was a second one you were doing. Sorry. That one wasn't me. Okay. I'll leave it at that one. Yeah, I don't. I can. He'll remember by we go around. Yeah, I'll get to it. Ah, it's on the spreadsheet. It's anyway, on here. Just um. <laughs> I don't know what color it is. That's what's throwing me off. <laughs> you don't have a color for Jesse. I, not Jesse, no. I had one for you. That's <laughs> virtual council is purple. What was that for? 
Well, well that was, it was Dave because me? Dave was, was kicking it, the can. Was it about the agenda? Kicking the can. The agenda. Oh, <laughs> oh those be fighting words, Dave. Where's, where's, where's the emoji? Dave, the them's the I got it. I'll send it to you. Man. I, I thought it was the, the uh, what do you call it? Ping. Exactly. <laughs> you were called, Carrie was calling for two things. All right, can we go to March? Yes, you can. Go ahead, March. So uh, we met this week with um, some members of the Shade Tree. Um, Greg was there, the new uh, tree guy we have in house. Um, Mayor was there as well, talking about two parts um, revising the tree ordinance um, and then also working on planting trees um, with shade tree funds. It was um, probably the other way around because when I got there, it was mostly about tree planting. Yeah, well, I, I kind of <laughs> looked at the clock and I was like, we got to move it along. So, yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> we kind of squeezed two meetings into one. So, Margie but just wants a tree planted. I just want anything. Having a difficult <laughs> time getting a tree. And I said, why are we having a hard time? So, it's going to be, it's, there's a list of priorities that we had looked at before. Right. Apparently, I guess the intermediate school wants two plum trees at their place. So, we might start there. Um, the shade tree is meeting again at the end of the month, and they're going to decide on a place. Then we have to um, figure out, in terms of, I know Greg, um, uh, not Greg, Mark had sent over the water tr truck, so I don't know if that's a possibility of. It's all, all we need from shade tree is direction. Like, okay. where are we yep. putting these things? Yep. So we'll get that direction after their next meeting yep. at the end of the month, and then the next step will be. Yeah, the to buy the tree, tree expert's going to work on getting and the And I have to say, the tree him. expert is, he's Very knowledgeable. pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got some incredible knowledge. He's like a tree is like Good personality, right. too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like, I like his personality, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. Call like a seer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's tall like a tree, too. Yeah, Whoa. Well, yeah. yeah, Bill's big. He's he's a good, good guy. Not a sapling. No, he's not a sapling. Um, so now I think that the uh, you know the next meeting we have to really focus in on the um, ordinance itself. Uh, we were thrown also that there are two ordinances: one commercial, one residential. We we did bring that up. I mm -hmm. think it's more important that we work on the residential piece because right now, um, Dave, unless I'm wrong, Fisher, you would know too. Or do we have any um, commercial areas in the hopper right now, like bigger uh, areas that are going to be redeveloped um, in planning? Or I mean, I don't think we have any. Yeah, there's something that I can tell you right now if you want me to tell you. That's brewing? There's brewing right now. We have a meeting uh, this Monday, uh, the corner of West Park and Route 35. Is going okay, to be yeah, that one. We know about that. I mean, any... Yeah, it was yeah that's in the right. hopper right, right now. Right. But well, there's no trees there now anyway, so it's not. Yeah, so anything. Whatever, like yes. trees and stuff? I mean, no, I mean, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, I well, mean, well, the well, idea is to, like, incorporate, it, like, tree planting in these site yeah. plants. Correct. So, right. like, so anything set. they add would like be Like they did at Wegmans, yeah. you know right. what I mean? Planning yeah. board's tough. I mean, they're not, you know, we want, we always have them, you know, yeah. max out on trees and exactly. vegetation and yeah. stuff like that. That's a big one. Right, I, I and Marge, you're right. I that's I like to look at the Wegman Shopping Center because it's one of our older complexes, mm -hmm. and it's got nice landscaping, nice tree work, and it's updated and upgraded. So I mean, that's what exactly. we as a council have been looking at the corridor, and you know, I mean, I think that if you know some of the other shopping centers can emulate that, um, and potentially at West Park, I don't know what the tree planning plan is on. Uh, deal in 35 was it pretty significant oh my god it was, it was yeah. like overkill i mean right. he put more trees in there than he was required to good yeah that's hey that that's fine yeah. rather have way more than not enough i think it's there gonna look tons of the buffer between the library i mean it's yeah it was before okay. my time on the planning board but there's a ton of they were planning tons right. of stuff but going back to the tree ordinance right we're going to administratively look at this right now, so we can get that moving. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be myself, Tracy, and uh, Greg, and then we're going to expand from there, and we're going to go bring in Councilwoman, excuse me, Deputy Mayor, and then we're going to um, bring in a tree expert, and then once we get things hammered down, because we're doing a comparison of what we originally had when I first got here, mm -hmm. to what we have now. Mm -hmm. And then Rumson uh, is what the tree expert told us to look at. So we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three of those. And then we'll come back with a recommendation of what we think and try to get some sort of mutual agreement with Shade Tree. Hmm. Sounds good. 
great. Good plan. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Dave, anything else? Or Morgie, anything else? I don't think so. Okay, Dave? Uh, I just had that planning board exciting meeting on Monday, so that's going to be, uh, we'll tell you guys all about what happens there. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard, but last night uh, there was a, a call that could have been a disaster at Monmouth University to turn out to be nothing, and thank God. Mm -hmm. But I had a quick uh, conversation with the chief today, and uh, I, I have to you know, say thank you to the officers. They, our guys were over there oh, like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, the chief went over there. So mm -hmm. I think you guys, you know, we, just, we owe them a little mm -hmm. round of applause, and uh, thank what God. What is the backstory? Because I only heard the, the resolve. Well, I'll give you my third-person version of it. Essentially, some girl was running through the parking lot with her curling iron, and mm -hmm. someone thought it looked like a gun. Oh. And they called and said, "There's somebody's running through the parking lot with a gun." And then I think at the same time, yeah. fireworks went off. So, so then they started getting calls, multiple calls saying shots were fired. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then all hell broke loose. And then they sent everyone, mutual mm -hmm. aid, the county, mm -hmm. you know, it, SWAT team. It, but um, I rather four hour on that four side. Hour yeah. Nobody wow. showed That's up. That's right. So mm -hmm. it. We, Kudos we to all yeah. who responded. But I, yeah. but I agree with the councilman. Some somebody should say that in the in the seven o'clock meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a, Kudos to the police department. Mm -hmm. They did a heck of a job. I mean, Mike was there fast. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. You know, yeah, he was in the command post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So kudos to those guys. That's mm -hmm. all I've got. Cal. I have nothing. Okie dokie. I I know. Well, you. I'm not up you, to your car yet. Mm -hmm. So. Did you figure <laughs> out what else you had? Been, yes, we figured it out. Yeah. It was yeah. naming uh, the roads. I, um, I have one quick flag. Is, yeah, go ahead, Jess. I'm sorry. Remember a few months ago, a woman contacted me about putting a little library in another location mm. at the park? Well, she put it up the other day. It's You'll see it when you run by. Oh, yes. I don't have a good... Um, her name is... It's oh. a terrible picture, oh, yeah, yeah. but it That's looks great. All the little, all the little libraries. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I have one across the street. She is so thankful, in West and she would love yeah. somebody maybe to go over if we contacted her, oh, yeah. so she could snap some pictures. Yeah, she just awesome. Send me it her looks number. great. I will. I will. She. <laughs> that was for your benefits. <laughs> this is her. Yeah. Rob's on it. But it but just reminds me something. Go ahead, Cal. to do it. Take a picture. Anything with Zach. I mean, was he told like where he could put these boxes or, or anything, or is there anything open that we owe him? Zach. Zach. Oh, yeah, Zach. That's that's taken care of. Okay. He met with Tracy Mark. and Mark, and they worked everything out to his and delight. He's, he's, okay. Because we can't put those big containers that he wanted to do because they're just illegal mm -hmm. to put them up. So they've got these, uh, you know, the blue recycling bins. We're going to use those in municipal buildings, mm -hmm. and people could come inside and drop stuff off in those bins, and then and he'll pick them up at a certain public time. Public works or him, they will collect them and get them to items. Okay. So he was very happy with that. Good. Uh, the next time any of you talk to him, or I'd be happy to, we have tons of bags with Donna in the front. So if you're, if you have your, um, four hundred Wegman. Wagmans, sure, uh, fresh direct, any of those. Mm -hmm. Donna's <laughs> got. <laughs> Tons of them. I, I brought about fifty. Okay. Uh, he was supposed to come and pick them up, so he hasn't picked them up yet. So. Well, they arrange some sort of pickup. I don't think it's like every day or. I, Donna right. says he hasn't. Yeah. She hasn't. Picked yeah, I don't even think the pickups even started yet. They, they run a label. The blue bins. The blue bins have No, no, no. Yeah. These were for the bags. Yeah, these are the fabric bags. Oh, oh okay. These were the bags that after he gets everything. You might want to call that. Created another problem. Yeah, Donna, no, yeah, this was just going to be a quick yes. one. Yes, yeah, just not plastic yeah. that you can use for cat litter and everything yeah. else that right. I used to do. I missed that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Good point. I used them for a thousand yeah. different things. Yeah. Lining the garbage cans. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Ready to go on closed? Mm -hmm. right. Wait, you, got some guests. Things? Sorry, Jack. Go ahead. That's okay. I wrote a couple things down. What was the getting this information that you guys have to over review before you can do it and getting it late for the last minute and stuff, the stuff you were talking about? Right? Yeah. Uh, that you just put an edict down, have it by this day, or don't submit it until the next month. Yeah. Well, that's, what we did. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what you did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did, Jack. This is they're taking advantage of you. Yeah. yeah. Jesse's yeah. going to send a yeah. memo yeah. out yeah. that tells all the department heads this is the cutoff date. 
unless it's an emergency. Yep. Yep. Emergencies are different. Yep. So yeah. Hundred percent. Yep. But to, to accommodate their schedule, they're compromising yours. That doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to me. Compromises Jesse too because she tries to get it all yeah, done. Yeah, exactly. Got to redo it. I always think of Jesse as, as a yours. Yep. He's always part of it. The other, the, the, uh, the, the non-lethal pad, I would still support non-lethal. You know, I've been reading all week long about the bears possibly being uh, done away with. What are we doing to our whole, you know, wildlife and so forth? It's all part of. I think there should be. Is there a price you put on that? I don't know. I mean, if you're giving up nature, what are you giving up? And is it worth paying for? I think it should be seriously considered, and it shouldn't just be a dollar thing. There's more to it than that. Uh, the tree thing, I think you should move that along. Have to get those planters done, get it in there, get the trees in the ground and so forth, and quit fooling around and waiting five years to decide whether you should plant this tree or not. I'm being a little impatient. Well, that's oh, not the I council. Know, that's that's, yeah, that's not shade tree. We've been asking. That's why I said yeah, for we've the been all, including our council representative. <laughs> uh, she's dying. Marjorie, <laughs> Mar I, I have to say, she's, she's been on top of it to get the trees planted. And, and I would like to compliment her contribution to moving that committee, that group, that commission along because it has tended to just vacillate for endless hours and weeks and months and years to get somebody to say, do something. I haven't seen any do something things happen. So I think that's very important and I would be 100% behind you doing that. If you need a shovel, I'll be there. You hear that, Marge? I, I just think it's important. Awesome. We need I don't want to hear that too many trees yeah, make more leaves to Water bags. <laughs> I've heard that, and I don't want to hear that anymore. Thank you, Jack. 100% support. Thank you, sir. Julia, do you have anything? Nothing for me. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go on closed. <coughs> Can you throw me out, yes. No, I'm not going to throw you out. I'm going to escort. There's a difference. Oh, wait. A motion to adjourn the work session meeting. It's all about, it's all about optics, Jack. Aye. Okay. Come on, Joel. Uh, <laughs> opposed. Opposed. Hey, whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances and whereas the public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Ocean, County of Monmouth, as follows, the public shall be excluded from the discussion of an action upon here and there after specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows, litigation, various matters, litigation, various properties, personnel, various departments. Uh, motion to approve. Aye. No way, they're going to wait for him to go back. Or motion to approve. Do I have a motion to approve that? I'll make, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, Kelly motion, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, just want to remind everybody that our council meetings will be audio and videotaped. They'll be shown on our county, on our uh, Oceans Community Channel, Channel 22 on Verizon Fios. And channel 77 on cable vision. Can we have a roll call, please? Mayor Napolitani? Here. Deputy Mayor Donlin? Here. Council Member Zachera? Here. Fisher? Here. Terry? Here. Please stand for a pledge flag and remain standing as we do a moment of silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. The notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the coaster posted in Town Hall, filed in the office of the Municipal Clerk on December 8th, 2022. The fire exit procedures are simple. We have two on the wall to my right that'll take you to the front of the building and one to my left that'll take you to the rear. All cell phones must be turned off. If there's an emergency, please step outside and use your phone out there. Make sure that they are turned off. Before we have our ceremony, I just want to go down the line and we'll have our council comments. Let's start with Councilwoman Terry. Um, I have nothing tonight, thank you. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Donlin. Yes, a few things. Uh, the Deal Lake cleanup this weekend was moved to Sunday because of the rain predicted for Saturday. 
Um, so the meeting is at, so they're meeting at the Deal Lake um, Asbury Park boat ramp right by the 7-Eleven starting at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, we also have the Green Fest coming up next month and that's gonna be at Joe Playa Park on Sunday, April 23rd from 10 to four. And then a couple of clean sweeps by the end of April, April 29th and 30th. We also have our egg hunt, uh, the Easter egg hunt and bonnet contest on April 1st at 11 a.m. at Oakhurst Fireman's Field coming up. And I just wanted to say uh, a huge kudos and thank you to our chief and our police officers for their swift handling of the incident at Monmouth uh, University yesterday. So thank you to our wonderful police department for that. Thank you, Margie. D uh, Dr. Fisher, Councilman Fisher. I just want to say congratulations to the Ocean Township Big Red football team. You guys make us proud. I know Coach Klein has been waiting a long time for a for this and uh, I believe you are the winningest most coach in Ocean Township's history. That is a tremendous uh, thing. You had a great team. You had a great run. It's like having lightning in a bottle. Every once in a while you hit it and it's just you guys did a great job. So congratulations to you guys. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> Councilman and Chair. I agree with uh, Dr. Fisher and uh, we'll be recognizing you all shortly for that. Uh, one, two things. Uh, Chamber of Commerce had our uh, scholarship luncheon and award ceremony this past Tuesday, and it was a tremendous turnout. Uh, great seeing all the kids that were awarded scholarships. Uh, as I said there, they are getting smarter and uh, more active than ever. So uh, we looked, uh, we were very uh, happy to award scholarships to them so that they can continue their education at their chosen colleges, uh, two Indiana universities and a Cornell. So uh, not bad. Uh, the next event for the Chamber of Commerce is the uh, wine and chocolate event. Uh, it is Thursday, April the 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. It is being held at the Shore Antique Center, uh, $25 a person, and you get to drink and eat for free. So if you know anybody that is interested in going, you can go on our website, but if you know anybody that is interested in being a vendor there, uh, you can go on the website and sign up as well. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, David Brown. Thanks, Mayor. I just want to ditto what the Deputy Mayor said about Ocean Township Police Department, job well done. And then echo Councilman Fisher and congratulate the football team on a job well done, too. Thank you. Matt? Nothing to report, Mr. No Mayor. report from our attorney. That's always a good thing. Uh, before we honor our football players, I just want to announce that last Friday evening at our annual St. Patrick's Day celebration, we announced the Mayor's Charity Ball recipients for this year, which will benefit the Mylan Terry Foundation. For those of you that don't know, this is a local Township of Ocean charity that has given out over a million dollars, mostly to families who have or are struggling financially with their children who are suffering from pediatric cancer. Zero dollars to run the entire foundation. It gives us great pleasure to be able to do this once again for them. As most of you know, we'll be honoring former mayor Christopher Siciliano for his years of service to the township as well as his many accomplishments, but we're also recognizing two other categories. We have the Stabola Realty Company, which has the Ocean Plaza as a landmark business in the southern quadrant of the township. That area, that entire um, shopping center over the years has really grown and developed to a point that we look at it as a council, we look at Highway 35 corridor and the you know things that we'd like to see improved over the next five years. So part of the plan of this council is to look at things like that, and that's why we want to honor the Stavola family and the Ocean Plaza because they constantly update and upgrade that quadrant there. And you're, you're going to see a lot of other things happen over the next few years. We're also honoring Jen Nordstrom and Mike Patrico from our Recreation Department. They, those two employees, and we've been honored employees in the past, but they have really gone above and beyond for this township. They have created more events for this township than we've ever had. They stay on the weekends, they work overtime, and they've done just a fantastic job for this entire community. And this council cannot thank them enough for everything that they've done. Mike Patrico has a plan in place to upgrade and update our parks and recreation areas, along with turf field that he's been working with Councilman Fisher on for our fields so that our young men and women can play on fields that have turf. So these honorees definitely deserve it, and we definitely cannot wait until that Mayor's Charity Ball, which will be taking place on May 6th at the prestigious Deal Golf and Country Club. 
So, without further ado, we are going to come off the dais and we will be recognizing the 2022 Ocean Township High School football team. Let's go on down. This is really exciting, especially for uh, three of us up here that graduated from Ocean Township High School. And to see this team out here gives us great pleasure to be able to honor all of you men that played on the football team this year. And it could not have happened without a few things in place. You guys have fantastic coaches, so come on up here, coaches. And as great as these coaches are, you guys have parents behind you that are there at the games, that support you, that support this program, and everything that it's developed over the years and the things that have been accomplished. So, Coach Klein, come on over here. He's our head coach. This guy has churned out the Kenny Pickett. <laughs> you don't get any better than that. You don't get any better than that. To have Coach Klein churn out a professional football player who is starting for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Coach, let's give this guy a big round of applause. <laughs> and the nice thing is, a few of us up here had kids that were in school with you guys. So, a lot of those names we recognized when we were signing your, your uh, uh, certificates. You guys did a great job this year. So, Coach... You had an undefeated regular season, 8-0. You had the Freedom Division champions, 5-0. You were ranked third in the Shore Conference in the winning percentage. And you were ranked seventh in the Shore Conference, correct? That's correct. By most media outlets, yeah. By most media outlets. Oh, what do you mean most? Well, I think the majority of the... Uh, the most respected media outlets had a seventh at the end of the season. Some, I think one had his eighth. Oh, let's go with the seventh then, right, Coach? Yeah. Best way to go. So, Coach, did you have to rebuild a team this year? Um, I think, no, I think, well, yeah, I mean, we every year is, is, is its own kind of entity. And, um, you know, this year's team was a team that played a lot of players uh, that were seniors. They played early in their career, sophomores and juniors. And uh, we had some ups and downs during those years. But uh, I think the experience they got leading into – the senior classes year and then the support they got from the underclassmen was, was important in us having the success we did. So it's always a process to build the team, uh, but this year's senior class did have a, a number of players that played early in their career, took some lumps, and then, uh, and then made up for it this year. So, Coach, uh, biggest challenges this year? This past year? Yep. I think, uh, you know, when you have success, uh, you're going to get everybody's best, uh, best effort. Um, you know, we, we had a couple uh, really, really well-known players throughout the Shore Conference, so I think there was – good buzz going into the season. And then once you start winning some games, then people start circling you even more than they do. So, uh, you know, consistency week in, week out. We only have, you know, about 40 guys uh, typically on, on, on in our program. So keeping everybody healthy and keeping people ready to play on Friday nights is important. Uh, but we, we feel like we have a good program that is uh, set in place to, to make those things happen. So consistency on a weekly basis. I thought, you know, one of the things we talked about with this team was that they practice at a very high level. They enjoy each other's company, which is important. But, uh, you know, we practiced at a high level every day and continue to get better as the season went on. So, Coach, uh, how are we with respect with these guys? Uh, the, the, great. We, we don't have any issues with, with, uh, with our players. Um, you know, I'm fortunate, like you mentioned, to have an outstanding staff. Uh, we are all in line with the expectations that we have for our players. Our community supports our program, uh, you know, at a, at a very high level. Our parents do a great job. Uh, you know, 16 years as head coach, a lot of the better teams we've had, this team had a lot of the characteristics of that team, and it's, it's high character, it's work ethic, and it's, it's a love for each other. So what was your biggest accomplishment this year? I, I think any time you go undefeated in the regular season, I think, I think you know, the teams I've coached have done it three times. I think it's been done four times in the history of the high school. Uh, that, that's a, that's a, huge, um, a huge accomplishment, you know, to, to be able to run the regular season table. Uh, and any time you win a championship is a good thing. So to be the Freedom Division champions after this year, uh, it was a big accomplishment. And what are going to be your challenges next year when some of your seniors leave? Yeah, I mean, we had a number of really talented kids. So, um, 
you know, we have to continue to work. Uh, we, we're, we're pretty pretty deep into our off-season conditioning program right now. We're getting pretty good um, attendance at those workouts. So, um, you know, we'll continue to work, put our players in the best position to have success. And um, we, we're lucky. We have a number of, of juniors that will rise into our senior class now that have strong leadership ability that played a lot for us last year. So we're, we're excited about the future also. Did Caruso give you a lot of problems back there? No. Tom does an excellent job. He's very, very helpful with the program. Uh, he does, does a really good job. Tom, I had to say it, but I'll tell you what. You know it's an important night when Don Stein shows up, too. So, Don, thanks for coming out, buddy. All right, Coach, I'm going to turn the mic over to you because you're going to introduce your coaches. We have some certificates for you, and let's bring up the boys that are here. Okay. Sounds good. All right, mine's on top. Uh, Coach Rich Reed. Coach R.J. Reed. Coach Sim, Coach Simonelli. Coach Green. Coach Wombo. Uh, if I could just take one second, I talk too much sometimes, but uh, very, very fortunate to have uh, f these men coaching our players. And again, appreciate them very, very much. Want to make sure they get the notoriety, notoriety they deserve publicly. Outstanding football coaches, outstanding men. So thank you, guys. <laughs> that temple. Nice Shane Garrett's here. Shane Garrett. Craig Flanagan, Jr. Not here. Ben Trench. Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Nick Caruso. Stephen Falco. Not here. Not here. Giancarlo Palazzolo. James Sobieski. Danny Farina. Matt Richter. Dodo. Job, Wes. Job, Wes. Nope. Bobby Paglia. John McLaren. Job, 
Jack Olive. Got everybody right here. That's here. Yep. All right. Thank you guys very much. Guys, let's go. Why don't you guys come on up? We'll take a picture, coaches. The purpose of the public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on the agenda, and it's not an occasion for a public hearing on an ordinance. All questions not related to the item on the agenda should be asked during the public comments portion at the conclusion of the meeting. Again, remember that we do have um, everything audio and videotaped, and we do have a timer. So if anybody has any questions in regard to the agenda, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Seeing here none. Do I have someone to offer the consent agenda resolutions 73 through 78? I'll offer. Second. I'll, I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Sepultani? Yes. Individual action vouchers in the amount of seven million seven hundred eighty-eight thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars and twenty-six cents. Do I have someone move? I'll offer. Second. I will second. Roll call. Oh, sorry. sorry. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. Individual action. Resolution 79 authorizing the cancellation of taxes for 2020, 2021, and 2022 and refunding or crediting the tax overpayments resulting from the New Jersey State Tax Court and Monmouth County Tax Board judgments to the following. Block 13, lot 19 in the amount of $42,788 dollars and ten cents for 2020 and 2021 block 34 lot 16 in the amount of twenty five thousand five hundred ninety six dollars and zero cents for the years 2020 2021 and 2022 someone please offer i'll offer second i'll second roll call achera yes donlin yes fisher yes terry yes Neplitani? yes resolution 80 authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the calendar year 2022 budget offer I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Nachera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 81, the emergency tre temporary appropriations number one for 2023. Do I have someone please offer? I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Nachera? Roll call. Nachera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 82, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the calendar year 2022 budget. Transfer to Storm Recovery Trust Fund. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I will second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napletani? Yes. 
Resolution 83, authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the calendar year 2022 budget, transfer to deferred sick and vacation funds. Someone offer. I'll offer. Second. I'm second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 84, authorize a contract with Taylor's Towing, doing business as D&J Towing, and Recovering Inc. Wall, New Jersey, for towing services for the two-year period, April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2025, at a cost not to exceed $124,925 per year. Someone offer. I'll offer. Second. I will second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 85, authorize change orders for the following. 2020 Roadway Improvement Program, change order number three, decreased by $2.62. Someone please offer. Gladly. Second. <laughs> I'll second. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Perry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 86, authorize a professional services contract with Leon S. Savakian, Inc. to assist in the development, implementation, and maintenance of the MS4 stormwater program at a cost not to exceed $11,500. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I will second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Resolution 87, authorizing the purchase of an enhanced 9-11 system for Motorola's, Motorola Solutions, Inc. under state contract number 83925 at a cost not to exceed $200,847.99. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I will second. Roll call. Achera. Yes. Donlin. Yes. Fisher. Yes. Terry. Yes. Napolitani. Yes. Ordinance 2416, which is an ordinance amending chapter 16 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled Parks and Recreation. Can I have someone open discussion on Ordinance 2416? I'd like to open public discussion on Ordinance 2416. Someone second? I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Anyone wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2416, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Hi. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I Can you just outline it a bit more? It's kind of big. Okay. What's that, David? It's the rental, it's the rental fees. Exactly. You're increasing the rental fees for the indoor facilities. That's it. That's, That's it. it. Oh, okay. It's that easy. <laughs> you can leave it up okay, there. You can leave it, Jeff. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Ordinance 2416? <clears throat> Seeing here none, someone please close public discussion on Ordinance 2416. I'd like to close public discussion on Ordinance 2416. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. Action on Ordinance 2416. I'd like to adopt Ordinance 2416 and publish according to law. Second. I'll second. <clears throat> Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. The uh, motion passes. Introductions of <clears throat> Ordinance 2417, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 21 of the Comprehensive Land Development Ordinance of the Township of Ocean. Someone please introduce Ordinance 2417. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2417. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. And that ordinance will have its uh, adoption on April 27, 2023. It's public hearing. Public hearing. I mean public hearing. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, ordinance 2418. An ordinance amending chapter, uh, chapter 7 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Ocean, 1965, entitled Property Maintenance and Housing Establishing the Lead Paint Inspection Program. Someone please offer like to offer Ordinance 2418. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. And Ordinance 2418 will also have its public hearing on 42723. Ordinance 2419, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a roadway dedication deed from Brielle Avenue LLC, which is the grantor. Someone please... 
um, introduce ordinance 2419. I'd like to introduce ordinance 2419. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Echera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. That will also have its public hearing on April 27, 2023. And ordinance 2420, an ordinance establishing a cap bank for the year 2023 in accordance with NJSA 48-4-45.14. Someone please uh, blah, blah, blah. Introduce. introduce ordinance 2420. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2420. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Achera? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Yes. Napolitani? Yes. That will also have its public hearing on April 27, 2023. Uh, we now have public hearing on any, I mean public comment on anything germane to the Township of Ocean. Again, please state your name and address for the record. You may step up to the microphone. You gotta turn it back on. Hit it just as C Jack. There you go. Jackie Wenzel, uh, Deal Road, 610 Deal Road. Um, yeah, I'm, I came here tonight because I was watching one of the workshop meetings and you were talking about this G5 installation. Can one of the councilmen talk about the G5 and what is planned? I, I guess Dave, you were saying something about these poles that are gonna be in front of people's house. 5G. 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 Sorry. Uh, so I'm going to give you my rudimentary knowledge of this. I'm not an engineer, but uh, obviously the internet is needing to speed up. The things that we're running on there, the videos and all that need to be upgraded. So the big issue right now is that the town, um, the utilities need to upgrade all of these things. So we have to figure out a way as a township to make these things not an eyesore so they're not all over the place. So we want to have one pole. Because remember, you have multiple carriers. You've got Verizon, Sprint, and whoever else is there. Right. So this way, we can sort of control this thing. We can't stop the internet from growing. I mean, these utilities have the rights to, you know, obviously improve their services. The 4G and 3G is dead. It's not going to work anymore, not with the technology that we have. So the idea is to do it in an organized way so the township has some control um, over all these things. So we have... You know, we can hide them, we can do the best we can so these things are not an eyesore all over the township. Yeah, it sounded awful when they were talking about when you were talking about yeah. it in the workshop. So right now the engineer is taking care of this, Greg Blash from Avaki and is handling this whole situation. He's much more of an expert on this than I am. So I'm just giving you my, you know, cursory knowledge of this thing. But he clearly knows more of this than I do. Is this a mandate that every township or city in New Jersey has to do this? It's not just New Jersey. It's happening all across the country. 5G, but do we have 5G to do it? 5G is a way of life. Well, because there's a lot of there's a lot of internet chatter about 5G. You know, I think the problem is the service. There's a demand for the service, you know, but you, who, who demands it? The, the people, the, the consumer. You cannot run your devices. You cannot stream your Netflix. You cannot do all these things with the slower form of Internet. Unfortunately, technology is going right on past us and, and this is the only way to keep up with I it. I understand that, but yeah. I've, I've not had any problem with my internet. Well, the <clears> answer <throat> is you may not, but the kid who's playing his video yeah. game and doing all sorts of crazy things, he is, so. So have we had complaints in the town that our internet is too slow? I don't necessarily know if it's a complaint from the town. I think it's the technology is moving forward and this is the, this is the wave of the future. I don't think there's any way to go back. Okay, could we deny it? I mean, do we have to do it? Or are we being pressured by Verizon to so do it? I'm going to just put an asterisk to this because, once again, I am not an Internet expert. I think the answer to this question is that um, the utilities have the right to do this. Yes. Without and us planning it ahead? They just come in and start putting these poles well, in front we, of people's houses? We want houses. as much control as possible in determining how many poles, how many feet between the poles, how high, high the poles are, that sort of thing. So we want to control as much as we can control as a municipality to make them and as the poles that they own they can do this on without our consent so there's poles in the community that already exist that they could do this on because they own the utility pole so if they own the utility pole they just can adapt so it Verizon to the new owns a pole they want to put 5g we could not stop them really that's Even my understanding a, there have been things people saying about the environment and that it's much stronger um I don't know if anyone else in the room here well, wants we to have, knows more about, but I've heard Jack, a lot of Jackie, things. Jackie, we have not made the decision yet on this company. Um, at this point, it's a discussion. 
but there, when it does come up on the agenda, you'll have an opportunity to discuss it at that point. But right now, the decision hasn't been made. But it hasn't. I just wanted to learn more about it, so I thought if you could yep. educate me I a little bit uh, more about it. I think Councilman Fisher did a great job. Thank you. Right. I'd like to make a... No, it's I was going to make a motion to have Dave the liaison to the technology committee. That's another committee? Come on. <laughs> planning on you there, Council. Well, it, sound, uh, it sounded like you, you knew the most about it, but I do think there is so much on the internet that's anti-G5, 5G, <laughs> that um, I would just like <coughs> it to have a little bit more conversation than us just feel pressured by Verizon or once, whatever. Once, once they start putting poles all over. Because that's something, again, with you know land use development and... Yeah. Aesthetically, um, how our township is going to look. Once that, once that comes on the agenda, the discussion will happen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address. Come on, stop. Okay. Emily Hidea, 7 Old Farm Road. Quick question uh, with reference to the polls. I know that they own the polls that exist, but... Uh, do they get to decide where they want to put new poles, where they want to expand those poles? Is that something that the town, townspeople, the, the residents can say, can, can have an input in on where they put the new poles? New poles would have to be proposed through the engineering committee, correct? Correct. Yeah, so new poles would have to go through a vetting process in order for them to be installed. The concern, however, is like what David had alluded to with the various providers. So if there is a Verizon network and they're enabled to put the 5G on their pole. What happens when AT&T customers or consumers and the company themselves don't have that bandwidth anymore and they want to come to us for a 5G? So what we're trying to do is find the best, if, if we're going to 5G, and I'm not saying we are, but if we're going to 5G, how can we manage this process so we are not inundated with all these requests so that we control what poles, what's on them, and how few of them we can manage. Like, not how many, how few. <laughs> right, I understand. So it's probably inevitable that we have to go to 5G. My question is, when Verizon or Optimum or AT&T or any just want to put up new poles, does the township have a right to say where they would like the poles, or do the residents have a right to know prior to those poles going up? Council? Yes. Yes? Okay. You get to know, you get to know the, the township Prior to it be de being prior decided? To, prior to the installation, oh. and, and as well as the public is going to have, you know, have a opportunity to know about this. Also. Well, I mean, okay, not just to be informed, but to be, you know, involved in the decision as to where they, where those utility companies get to put their poles. Depending upon what exactly you're talking about, mm -hmm. but in, I guess, the 5G. It's going to be like the land use, right. where, where they're going to put it in. Mm -hmm. So you'll be having those hearings. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> just push it in. It goes right in. <laughs> okay. Thank you. you. Just drop the mic. Yeah. Any other comments? Hold on, Don. You might be here a while. Let me get this set. <laughs> Hold on. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> All right, you're on. Oh, I got I'm a time limit? Yeah, you got five minutes. I can do it. <laughs> uh, Don Stein, Chestnut Avenue. I'm here on behalf of myself, and I think to a certain extent my neighbor, Dickie Kirk. Um, I have two issues. The one is the deer. Now, you guys have been kicking this can down the road forever. And believe me, if anybody knows, I know. Robert knows, okay? And I don't know. And remember when the state came in here and gave the big presentation? John, I don't know if you guys were here. But it's like, what was the last study? We have 10 times the amount of deer that we're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And the state came in here and said, if you don't do something about this, the deer will start to starve to death because they eat the indigenous species, the non -indigenous, and they will start to starve to death. And I know people in Asbury that the deer are swimming across the lake, coming up on their docks, and eating the food there. 
Okay, and I want to plant two trees in my yard. I have to go online. Well, are deer going to eat them? And if they don't eat them, they rub their, you know, they, ba ba ba. You have to make a decision. Stop kicking this down the road. You don't want a deer hunt? Well, they pass an ordinance to introduce packs of wolves into Palaya Park, okay? <laughs> you have to do something. It's like Ocean Grove. Oh, the parking, the parking. There is no parking in Ocean Grove. There are too many deer in Ocean, and you have to... They elect you to make the hard decisions. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Agreed. Donald. Make Donald. the hard decision. <laughs> okay. The, the second point. We'll answer the deer piece after the second point that you have. The other point is: Is there a road program here? So, in other words, a certain street in the township is scheduled to get improvements on such and such a base basis. I'll answer the easy one first, which is the road program. Yes. Yes. The roads. All streets, roads are graded by our engineer. Well, when you do Chestnut, is that little footbridge across the lake included in there, or is this? Uh, Don, I would, I would have to have the engineer come over there and take well, a look at that. Well, I would appreciate it if Absolutely. you could look into yeah. that because yeah. yeah, when that we can have them look at it that. It needs some attention, and it has for a very long time. And we don't want a big new modern bridge come. Th we're in a little quiet section of the lake we just need maybe some new asphalt the graffiti gone you know the dam fixed up so the water doesn't flow over because in the winter it freezes and people slip and fall in the summer the analogy grows and people slip and fall and this is your property and this is your liability okay and if you if you have a chestnut avenue street improvement program then you should put this footbridge on it because it's used widely. Don, what we'll do is we'll have our engineer go out there and take a look at that footbridge in the other area. Now the next thing. Well, they have before, but not, it's the can that gets kicked down well, the road. John. It depends on what the engineer deems in the grading system of the roads. Every, you know, there's a lot of roads, and you know, we have we're 10.2 square miles in the town. I understand, of Ocean. but all I'm saying So there's a there's a road program that gets obviously graded. The roads get graded and they're in sequential order as to where we're doing I it. Understand we try how it to works. we but, try to do roads in different sections of the town each year. But so, is the footbridge Don, included Don, in I have to get the answer okay. from Well I would like to know I will David's okay. gonna get that. It doesn't need a lot. It's yeah. not a big project. It but may it be something we can fit in. Now, the deer issue. Yes, agreed that it's been kicked down the road. We are in the middle of doing a study with the state because we're looking into non-lethal. Uh, there's information that has to go You've back. You've already done this, John. Oh, no, no. Don, it's a, a little different now. I'm going to let Deputy Mayor Donlin speak on this as she's been working on this one, and I don't want to overstep her at this point. Yeah, just to, I mean, there has been delays in trying to figure out what to do, and we've had plenty of meetings about this to hear from one side, from the state, what to do, and other options as well. Um, currently, we, we did pr present a proposal to the state. It got sent back to us that it needed 10 more items to be fulfilled, one of which was the formal deer study that was done this past fall. Um, and then these other items are being addressed one by one. In fact, we have another meeting next week with um, someone who could do potentially non-lethal method of, of, um, of well, maintenance. Well, is your approach and, to the state uh, that uh, you're approaching and, them only with the non-lethal option? We're, we're looking at all of these options and what's feasible for a sustainable in uh, a sustainable program of deer maintenance and is there in a, okay. Ocean and Township. Is there an end but there's game a certain here? process, and the process is moving along. We're moving as fast as we can. Yes, the process has been moving along done. for a decade. It's not done. being kicked down the road. Though there is are steps to the process, and, Don, and pro there's also is happening right now. There, there was also we we did get resident input from this as well. Well, I know that. So that's it's taking a little longer than expected. But, but Don, really I assure you, no, you had a referendum. You had the whole nine yards. We can't How do anything. We can't do anything until the state approves a plan. Okay. No, that's what we're working. And on. how long is there a time frame here? Ask the state. 
Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Anyone else wishing to be heard? It's okay for you, right? Easy. I don't think it's on. It might be. Just you can grab it. Just you could take the whole thing out. There you go. Push the button. I don't think it's on. I don't think it's on. Push the button. It has to turn green. Hold the button. Go ahead. Try it now. Hello. There you go. Heather Monsabo. 1412 Rustic Drive. I'm just coming here to your meeting to kind of make you aware of the situation that's going on in the apartment complex that I currently live in. Um, I've lived there for a couple of years. Most recently, they tried to... Or Which complex? I'm sorry, Miss. Middlebrook. Middlebrook, Middlebrook. Middlebrook yeah. Um, they have r risen the rent by 8.3%. I was calling to find out, or coming to find out, if you guys have some type of rent control board in your town. We do not. Is that something that has ever been brought up or discussed? It has not been brought up. Because, I mean, I've done some research, and normally the average rental increase is from 4 to 6%, and they've raised, for the entire complex, 8.3%. And there's a lot of people that lived on a fixed income, and just... Um... David, our manager, um, we can have a discussion about that, uh, you know, at the next uh, potential work session, uh, maybe for the April meeting, just to bring it up and start the discussion. Is it Thank consistent you. that they're doing this elevated rate? Or no. is this the first time you've experienced or the first time you've been there? So I've been here, this is my third time my lease was renewed. Um, normally, it's under 4%. Okay. So this has been a huge jump from uh, 3 point something per percent to 8.3 okay and people that have lived there for 10 or more years also experience the same jump that other people have okay my mother-in-law sitting back <laughs> as well thank you. in a separate building experience the same thing so thank you okay thank you i just want to leave it on the table <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Naomi Caravallo. Great. So you're talking to it. Just take it out. Naomi Caravallo. Is on? Yep. Um, I live in the Middle same Park. complex for seven years. And they always rent, they increase the rent at 20, every year $20. I could afford that. This past, they $85. Exactly. That's what I said. I'm like, oh, I have to get a part time and another part time for the full time. Mm -hmm. Just to have some meat in my kitchen. You know? So can we do something? That's like Kate said, we'll we'll bring it up for discussion. We have to talk to our manager about that. I mean twenty dollars every year I was fine with it, you know, but eighty five dollars June. Yeah. It's hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Hey, you got it. Just Mike doesn't stand a chance with you. <laughs> okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? Actually, if I can oh. make a comment, I apologize, yes. Mr. Mayor. Uh, do uh, Cliff Billows or uh, uh, Nick Billows or Cliff Hanley have any questions? He just called him out. Okay. You sure? <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure because you have to make sure you get your communications merit badge, right? <laughs> You're not sneaking away. Your mother sent me an email. <laughs> no questions? All right. We'll see you guys at the next meeting so you can ask the questions then. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion? Uh, second. Achara? Yes. Donlin? Yes. Fisher? Yes. Terry? Napoletani? Yes. Meeting adjourned. She gave me, she gave me, just in time. she gave me permission.